Welcome back to the Telco as a Platform Summit, part of our DSP Leaders coverage. And time now for our live Q&A show. I'm Guy Daniels, and this is the first of two Q&A shows. We have another one tomorrow at the same time. It's your chance to ask questions on this highly topical subject. I mean, the news today of China's commitment to the Open Gateway Initiative, which you can read all about on Telecom TV, shows how interest in this area is accelerating rapidly. Now, we opened our summit with a panel discussion that made the case for a platform-based approach to services. It's only just finished, but we are already receiving questions from you. If you haven't yet sent in one, then please do so now using the Q&A form on the website. Let's now meet our guests who are eager to help with all of your questions. And joining us live on the programme today are Mark Gilmore, Chief Technology Officer for Connectivity Europe, Terry Jensen, SVP Business Security Officer and Network and Cloud Technology Strategy for Telenor, and Francis Hasem, Principal Analyst with Apple Door Research. Hello, everyone. Thanks for returning to answer our viewer questions. And let's get straight to our first one. Let me read this out for you. Regarding the collaborative cross-industry approach, what are the key points of alignment needed between telcos for platform-based deployments. And Terry, perhaps we could start by getting your thoughts on that. Yeah, thanks, Guy. It's a, a great question, I think. Uh, so so uh, uh, as it goes for any collaboration, of course, uh, with across companies, uh, you, you, you uh, need to define, you know, uh, a catalog on, on what kind of capabilities or what kind of uh, services you have uh, available. Uh, and then you also need to define, you know, the interfaces or call it also APIs on, on how to utilize those uh, capabilities or, or how to activate those services. So those are, are the two, uh, you know, uh, fundamental building blocks. Uh, then, of course, uh, just to pull that into a commercial or operational uh, context, and uh, no, probably potentially starts the complication from a, from a telco point of view. So, so we, of course, would like to understand, you know, the usage into, say, call it a workflow, life cycle, uh, the descriptions or whatever, kind of basically a process. Uh, and uh, so that will be part of an operating model. So that will also be a part of the description, you know, of what is the workflow to uh, to use the different uh, capabilities or different services. And the reason for that uh, tend to be from the telco is that we are managing some of the privacy data, for example, we are managing some of the critical infrastructure data and so forth. So we need to take care of, uh, of uh, these aspects. So, for example, if there is a request for an identity verification, is there a user consent, for example, to, to use that information and so forth? And this might be, of course, complicating the process. So it's not only about, you know, the catalog and the APIs, but it's also the, the flow uh, of, of interactions. Another thing, of course, is uh, if there is payment involved, there is also regulations around the you know, payment as well. Uh, so, and all these kind of things comes into play in, in the, when you're doing it in a commercial setting. And this might be, of course, uh, uh, looked upon as, you know, telcos complicating things. But some of these things are purely coming from, you know, the regulations or, or even the laws. Uh, and some of the things are, of course, uh, coming in that we need to protect, you know, the, the customers uh, as well. Uh, so so that, those are the kind of the fundamental things there. So it's the, the catalog and the, and the APIs, but it's also the, the, the process flow in a sense. Then, of course, the question, I think, is also addressing to the, the collaboration across the different telcos. Uh, and then, of course, it's good to, uh, to use and lean on international standards, as I see it. And some relevant ones are, you know, Camara or the Linux Foundation and GSMA collaborations and others coming from, say, for example, the TM Forum. Uh, so, so that means that similar services could be available and also the same APIs could be defined for across a number of different telcos. So on top of that, I think it's also when you talk about the, the cross-industry approach, it's good to understand, you know, how the, these services are actually uh, used, consumed. Uh, so it's not only about the telco components and the, or the platform components and the, and the services, but it's also the way we are. it's used by, by different uh, consumers or different users. So, so that's also uh, good uh, that we have, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, back to the intent on how we want to uh, utilize these kind of things. So... 
So that could also be part of the, the process description, actually, on, on supporting the, the life cycle and that the, also the, the user of these APIs are actually expressing uh, the, the higher level intent. And that's also important when you come to what kind of services are we actually exposing uh, and meaning the, the level of abstractions. And there might be, for example, connectivity services like voice and messaging and, and the broadband, for example. But it could also be services on a bit of a next level, for example, ex uh, exposing a higher quality video uh, service. Uh, and even on the next level, like, for example, using that, that high quality video service into an online secure patient's monitoring. So all these levels of, of capabilities or abstractions could be relevant into the, into the APIs. And all this could be part of the same platform uh, and opening up, you know, for, for different ways to different kind of users to consume these different services. Great, Terry. Thanks so much indeed. Uh, obviously, a lot of areas of alignment re for for for, for Turcos to consider. But as you were saying, um, there are there's already a lot of work being done. There are groups out there who who are putting together frameworks and, and what have you to to support that. Um, let, let's uh, see if our other guests want to jump in on and add any extra insights into this. Um, Mark, did you want to um, add anything to this uh, initial question about um, the points of alignment that we, that we need to consider? Yeah, happy to. I think Terry covered it really, really well. I'm I, Those three areas of, of um, catalog, um, API, well, API, I kind of see as an a methodology of being able to to deal with that uh, that interconnect, um, uh, and then the business processes. I think that those the processes and the workflow is really, really, really important. And those APIs can be used uh, to kind of standardize across how those workflows um, would uh, would operate. Um, I think the, the the catalog though is really, really vital. You know what. What, what actually needs to be exposed in order to deliver a, a, an end-to-end -end service for the customer. Um, because um, in, a, in the market where I am, for example, in the wholesale market, um, I'm going to be exposing slightly different services to my, my alliance and, and connect partners um, as they're exposing them to their, to their, uh, their, their enterprise customers. Um, but overall, that's that's to produce an end-to-end -end service. So it's tying those those in. So there's there's work to be done then on uh, on on collaborating together on on how that end-to-end -end service uh, delivery is is achieved. And I, the other thing that I think that needs to happen on the collaboration front is there needs to be a, a good understanding of, of who fronts to that customer. Uh, if we want to have a a, a truly collaborative cross cross operator cross platform um environment uh so that we can you kind of need to drop the ego a little bit uh, and work on a on a on a collaborative model perhaps also commercial model to then be able to um offer best service for for the customer well very interesting mark thanks very much for for those additional points uh francis um any thoughts on this initial question on, on collaboration and, and and points of alignment Yes, perhaps I, I, I can put in a little bit of a controversial view here. And I, I hear in the question a little bit of what I would term is the, a little bit of the telco standards process is that we all need to collaborate. We all need to agree on what we're going to uh, what we're going to do up in, in, in advance in order that the telco can solution can, can work. And sure, there are aspects of regulation um, that, that, that will affect the whole of the telco industry. But I think there's a, a different form of collaboration, which is starts with actually people really saying, "Look, here's here's a commercial proposition that I I want to make in my maybe in my area or maybe globally that I think I'm going to take the lead on." And there could be uh, I've just come back from um, a CNCF conference, KubeCon in Paris, and a very different mentality in terms of collaboration. Start with the problem that that needs to be solved then collaborate to make that um, problem go away. Um, and I think Telco almost re needs to relearn some of its history here. You know, things like pay as you go, as, as an example, were not something that started as a collaborative initiative. They were started by individual Telcos saying, I want pay as you go as a, a way of differentiating myself in the market. And we perhaps need to get some more of that energy into this process. Great. Thanks so much, Francis. Uh, uh, Terrier, you wanted to, to come back in and uh, to respond to, um, I believe, uh, what you might have just heard. Terrier. 
Yeah, no, no, I was just uh, supporting actually Francis. I, I think it's not uh, in my mind at least controversial at all. I think uh, so. So it's not like you know you have to collaborate and agree in all dimensions before you can start going. You, you better start going with some focused uh, value to uh, say a number of customers, for example. Uh, so so uh, build on that and then start on a platform uh, in that way. But of course, start in the way that it can be scaled. I think that's that's very important. But uh, it's also good, you know, to start with something which is uh, providing value as kind of delivering a quick proof point on on uh, that approach is uh, is valuable. And I also fully agree with the, with the, what Mark is saying that uh, in a wholesale retail setup there will be a number of roles and a, diff- a number of different offerings. Uh, and for example, say Telenor, for example, we are we are in all these roles. Uh, that means that we are going to you know expose a number of capabilities and. In some cases, we are also going, of course, to compete uh, with uh, someone we are collaborating with. So, so this is kind of the, the dynamic landscape we have to maneuver in, and, and it's not, you know, given that uh, everything will be very clear when we start. Uh, but it's uh, also what I think Francis is saying that we need to get started, and then we solve the problems as they are appearing. Excellent advice. Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, three sets of great advice there um, for our first question. So let's move on to another viewer question we have received in the past hour or so um telco as a platform should be adopted as holistic and agnostic to the type of network and yet the wider industry tends to associate them as 5g or mobile specific how therefore do we broaden the message to include fixed and wi-fi and attract developers and customers to those networks I think we're, we're guilty of uh, focusing on mobile an awful lot. Um, Mark, um, what thoughts do you have to, to make sure that this is holistic and agnostic? Thanks, Guy. That's why I'm here, um, ultimately, to give, a, to give a, a, a non-mobile or perhaps an extended um, uh, view on that where, um, rather than just be 5G or, or cellular-centric. Um, I've spent a lot of my career on that side of the, the fence, but... Right now, I'm I'm involved in and, and and focused on the on the fixed and particularly on the the backbone element of the network, which is where I started off my career. It's kind of been fun to come full circle onto that. But um, there's been some great work actually um, in in the last few years on bringing together some of those uh, concepts around catalog, around um, APIs, around um, service offering in in the wholesale market, for example. Um, and we've got uh, industry bodies such as MEF, uh, TM Forum was mentioned earlier, where uh, a lot of work has got in to, to kind of understand what is that ordering and orchestration process that needs to happen on a, on a global scale to, to enable uh, end-to-end service a- across the board, which ultimately will be delivered to the end user via you know, cellular fixed um, broadband sort of uh, sort of offering. So um, the, the 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 person raising the question, I think, um, really has, has 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 hit into the right right sort of area that that this is an opportunity to be holistic and and proper and end to end focused um, in in uh, in the approach. If we're going to go down the, the 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 approach of network as a service or plat- telco as a platform, um, and I think this really then creates opportunity and creates um, uh, an environment that really does have to happen across all of the aspects. Um, you know, the cellular and, and uh, part of it is one access medium onto that, very important access medium. But it, interestingly enough, even when I was working in that environment, um, you know, the only part of it that is wireless is really the bit between the end user and the and the and the, the cell tower. The rest then goes on to fixed network, network fixed networks, particularly if we're wanting to um, achieve the sort of latency and bandwidth and and performance characteristics that that uh, a lot of the applications start to demand. So um, it is a it is a an end to end approach. It is a, hel- a bit more of a holistic approach. And multiplayer operators, you know, those that have their cellular networks as well as fixed, as well as uh, enterprise grade um, uh, access, they the, those are the sort of people that we're working with, and we're seeing how they are developing their platform offering, uh, and then in conjunction with with what we're up to, 
how we then extend that capability onto a more global reach. Uh, it's really fascinating what's happening in that. And so there, there, there is strides, there are movements going in that direction. And things like MEF, things like TM Forum are good um, uh, base points or foundations to build upon. But I really agree with uh, Francis's comment earlier on in that we can't take a traditional standards delivery organization sort of approach that we have done over the, the many decades of telco and, and just wait for a decade upon decade release because uh, yeah, that just doesn't work. We need to move much, much quicker than that and, and adopt um, a much more um, engaged um, development process for that and call it what you will, agile or whatever, DevOps, all those sort of things. But essentially what it means is listening to the customer developing in line with their customer needs and then delivering to that end customer um, in a timely manner uh, and not forcing a technology or forcing a the, the, no, the next iteration upon them. But it's it's more intent and, and, uh, and customer driven. Great. Thanks very much, Mark. The opportunity is there for us um, if we want to grasp it. Um, and you, you mentioned uh, what Francis was saying earlier. Let's go over to Francis now. Francis, um, w w what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think Mark makes a really, really strong point, which is that there are there are APIs and opportunities all over telco. It's not simply in 5G or in mobility more widely. Um, I think, again, I come back to some earlier, earlier point. We, we've got to start with what, what is the problem we're trying to solve for developers? Um, there's a danger in this question, again, which is we, we're looking for the universal API to all of telco. And that, I don't think that's the way developers see it. Um, and that's and, and many different networks are providing very, very different capabilities. So definitely look for alignment in the APIs, for example, access on demand on a mobile on a, on a, on a, a mobile network or on a fixed network is certainly something that is uh, uh, ideally um, standardized in order that a developer can use it, whatever the technology in an area. Location-based services, limited, lim probably limited um, opportunity there. So I think the important thing I think for all of these APIs is start with what is the problem I'm trying to solve for the for the developer, and what is the likely commercial model that they'll they'll provide for me delivering that one. And in some ways, I think we we almost need to look at it in a, in a slightly different way, which is actually APIs targeted at specific developer communities rather than the APIs targeting at what the telco thinks they can sell to the developers communities may well be the opportunity for um telco as a platform mm, that's uh, food for thought there francis uh yeah well i wonder if uh, any of our viewers online might want to send in some uh, follow-up questions to that that's very interesting um either today or for tomorrow's show where we focus more on apis um terry let's come across to you on this question of uh, being more holistic in in, in the approach yeah, on the risk of being boring, I have also fully agree, I think, with Francis and, and Mark. I think, uh, as I see it, uh, one of the basic ideas with the platform is uh, actually to have a place to expose, uh, you know, any assets or any services. And that should be independent of the underlying technology. And it's also, you know, a place for a, for a user to go uh, in order to, uh, to utilize or, or uh, invoke these kind of services. Again, should be independently uh, independent of the underlying technology. So... So it's not about only about 5G or in, even even mobile. It goes across fixed and and the other other types of access as well. Uh, and we have been engaged in a couple of examples, if I may. So so uh, one one case is that we have implemented as a as a, as a demo case uh, quality on demand, uh, which then of course uh, for say for example with for a high quality video conference ser service, which works on on 5G definitely, but uh, just as well also on fixed access or, or optical access if you, if you want. Uh, and in order to work uh, in, a, in a good way, it's not only the access configuration which needs to be placed, it might also be configuration of the device that is the terminal itself. So so so, uh, so it's not only about access, it's also about the no number of different domains which need to capture and be addressed, for example, which can be then evoked uh, through, through the platform itself. Another example is, uh, is managed Wi-Fi, I think it's also indicated in the question. Uh, so, it's, so, for example, access or managing smart home, uh, or even on the on the office uh, Wi-Fi conf configuration. So, so, so that's also uh, we see examples on on the, which is already supported out there through a, through a platform. So, so, uh, but then of course the question I think is also what what Francis was saying 
it doesn't have to be you know one single platform solving everything or one single platform instance solving everything. It could be a number of different you know instances and different uh, uh, and different implementation of that. And just to broaden the question maybe even further, uh, so what we are doing is that in the platform itself is not only overall that is Telnor assets, but also pulling on in partner assets uh, as a part of the offering. So. So that's is, is uh, we should also be part of a, of a platform approach that we can you know expose any kind of hosting any kind of uh, offerings or services uh, as part of the platform. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, uh, and thanks for telling us on uh, of uh, Telenor's um, approach as well and what you're you're doing at the moment. Um, let's move on to another viewer question here. So I'm just reading as we speak, um, Francis. Let me put this one across to you. Are the majority of telcos ready to offer platform services to enterprise customers? Or is this, at the moment, just a capability for a handful of either very large or very niche telcos? What do you think? I honestly think everybody can play in this area. I don't think this is this is not about how big you are. Um, it's about how target, you know, targeted you are and your, your, your focus on a commercial opportunity. Um, at the, any telco that can address what is it my applications need, what is it the enterprises that I'm engaging, my, what I'm exposing my platform to, um, can and it can clearly say what that uh, capability is and why somebody would want to buy it has the opportunity to succeed here. Succeed here. Um, and uh, I, I've used the comment many, many times. A good platform and a good API is one that is used. It's not about it, it's not about how well formed it is or anything else like that. Um, the opportunity for the smaller providers, I think, um, is is quite huge, and, and we're already seeing that in some of some aspects of some of these solutions that the operators in the global south are providing in terms of delivering to their local development communities um, in, in, in their specific areas. Another area specifically to do with the enterprise is, is, you, is using other enterprise platforms. Well, we've recently done a, um, a profile of ServiceNow's service bridge capability, which is something which a telco can buy as part of an enterprise and provide that to enterprise customers, providing a seamless experience from the enterprise's network into the telco's network. So there's a whole load of opportunities which are there, some of which are ready and off, off the shelf capabilities that could, can be provided by telcos of any size. Thanks, Francis. So um, it's open to all. Um, let's hear the views from Mark and Terry as well. And uh, Mark, let's start with you. I think it's a mixed bag, actually, in terms of uh, in terms of capability. Uh, I agree with uh, Francis about opportunity. The opportunity is definitely there. In in uh, maybe I can give a, a, from our own experience what, what what we're what we're seeing right now. Um, connectivity. We kind of place ourselves as a wholesale player. We place ourselves. Kind of in the middle with with lots of our our, our connect and alliance um, partners and and channel partners um, kind of around that and what we have found that in, in able to to generate platform success we need to be able to meet those uh, those carrier uh, partners and and channel partners at, at where they are able to at this moment in time. You know, with with legacy systems in place, with with um, large scale development programs and things like that, it's not always that easy for them to be able to pivot or move move swiftly. But um, there are mechanisms, and we we've kind of adopted a, a kind of a four po four tier approach to that. So you know, where we have the ability that if somebody has you know got no automation capability a, a, at all and no 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 real um, uh, mechanism for that, then we can provide a, a, a simple um, translation, as it were, or a manual task that, that that can be automated, that is automated, that can be feature as part of the platform. Um, and and it, it's more like a, a static approach there behind. So there's a bit of manual work going on in the back, background there, but it, it enables um, a, a player, a partner with without um, a, a or at the beginning of their automation journey, because ultimately that is part of the the 
the need or the dis or the uh, the requirements, the prerequisites to be able to move towards platform um, a platform approach and network as a service sort of approach. You need to have that level of automation and orchestration in there. You know things that we've spoken about in other of these sessions and other of these 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 um, uh, sort of summits. It it all it all ties in together. This doesn't stand as it uh, as it on its own. So we take that approach of you know helping somebody that's at that base level. Then you have those that are further along in their in their automation journey or have have the desire to do that, and we can provide a a an instance of our own platform that can reside within their network to then start to create a bit more of a fabric um, across uh, across as a across operational cross um, cross functional um, um, platform. Then there are others that have gone full hog down their own way. They've got their own integration. They've got their own um, orchestration and platform place pieces in place. And they may have done that via a standardized approach, such as MEF LSO. And if that if so, then we can do some quick testing and we can start to integrate. Or that there may be they may have done that on a proprietary way with their own APIs that have been created. And again, we can take that methodology, we can do some um, translation, some interoperability to make sure that we align and move forward. So we kind of have these four levels that we're seeing in the market at the moment, um, right from I have nothing today, but I want to play in that space through to I'm, I'm already, I've already got full, full um, integration, full automation, full platform. And this allows us then to to sit behind that in an AP, uh, utilizing some common APIs, utilizing some developed APIs to then bring extra value. So it's uh, that's where I see this uh, this 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 the current position, and I just see it continuing to grow. And we're in we're um, in ingrained into making that happen. Great, thanks very much, Mark. So there's there's ways to offer platform services irrespective of where you are on your individual transformation journey um excellent uh terry let's get uh, some thoughts from you as well please yeah no, no, i would believe that you know that most telcos uh, who are offering or delivering b2b or enterprise services uh, beyond the basic connectivity uh, would have some kind of service platform in place uh, and would therefore also be able to support you know uh, apis or or, uh, or the platform perspective on two external users uh, so, so that means that you know, uh, if you have that, uh, unless it's a very, very old-fashioned system, you probably have something you can build on. Then, of course, there comes the question: that's a potential you have. Uh, to what extent are you going to to use it, uh, and what kind of uh, positions would you like to take towards the external market? I think what what uh, Mark is uh, alluding to, which is of course a basic question, is not only a technical discussion; that is also. So, you know, the organization, the skill sets you have and those kind of things which needs to come into place in order to uh, to address those. And just to be, uh, uh, you know, some of the, I would say, old-fashioned, old-style services uh, which we see in some of the service platforms are, you know, basic things like, you know, the switchboard attendance, uh, core queuing, customer care and all those kind of things. Uh, and if you really want to, uh, to take advantage of this from an enterprise point of view, you might, you know, need to integrate that with other enterprise uh, IT systems, uh, and then, and uh, to support that, of course, you need an API, and then you're back to the platform view in a way to to uh, to to support this in a scalable way. So I think that's also what uh, what Mark is alluding to that uh, you know there are ways to do that, and, and many of the uh, telcos have components there. Whether they want to are willing to open up, it's not only a technical discussion; it's also a business discussion, of course. So so uh, so, but the potential I think is there for. For many of the telcos, uh, then of course the question: How are you going to approach it, and how do you want to develop it further? And that's basically a business question. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, there's uh, uh, there's technical guidelines, there's, there's technical reasons, but there's also the business reasons, and individual telcos need to decide that's their strategy they want to pursue. Thanks very much indeed, everyone. Um, we're going to pause for a few seconds because we do want to check in on our audience poll for the Telco as a Platform Summit. The question we are asking you this week is, what are the main benefits to network operators of a telco as a platform strategy? And you can see the real-time votes appearing right here to my right. Um, look at that one. Uh, create new service opportunities in the enterprise market. No surprise, I guess, that... Uh, well, well, I don't think there's a surprise. Uh, that is proving to be a very popular answer choice. Now, if you've yet to vote, please do so. Um, I'm already seeing the votes go up uh, every few seconds. So we're getting a lot of response into this 
poll. Uh, we will take a final look at the voting during tomorrow's live Q&A show. Well, we still have time today for more questions. Uh, so let's get through as many of them as we can. And we'll start with this one. How do our panellists see telcos working with aggregators and hyperscalers, given their proximity with developers and enterprises globally and the fact that hyperscalers have much better relations with developers? Terry, let's come to you first on this one. Um, this is a question we, we, uh, we see quite a few times, actually. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, it's a very good question, I think. Uh, and just to take uh, one by one, uh, to start with the aggregators, uh, and, and just to, to maybe jump to the conclusion, there will be multiple ways to engage with the aggregators and hyperscalers. Uh, and starting with, uh, with the aggregators, uh, the way we are engaging, for example, we are both, we are both uh, an, as a customer of an aggregator, say, for example, on, on, on SMS, uh, which is a basic uh, service, the number of aggregators uh, out there which is offering SMS uh, and termination of SMS and those kind of things. I mean, it might be a customer of those. We are also, in some cases, the aggregator ourselves. Uh, so so uh, we have uh, units within Telnor, which is actually uh, doing as their main business, becoming aggregator across a number of other uh, opcos in, in Telnor. Uh, and the third relationship is also that we're providing inputs, you know, uh, to aggregators, you know, as, as a local company, for example. So for aggregators, you will you will see all mix of, of engagement uh, with, with telcos. And you can see that even in the same market, uh, although they tend to be on different services. So, so that's kind of a bit of a complex uh, landscape, uh, how, how we see it uh, right now. Then, then, of course, a bit similar as we see it on uh, on hyperscalers. So hyperscalers, of course, will also position themselves a bit differently in the in the value network. Uh, so, so take for example, uh, if you go into the cloud platform, of course, uh, which might be the the cleanest in a way, we clearly will be a, a, a consumer of that in in, in some cases. Uh, but we also a partner uh, in in some of these uh, setups. So, say for example, in the mobile private network we were running in one over over Asia. Uh, uh, operations. Uh, we were using that for a harbor case. Uh, so, so that was uh, installing a, an edge cloud uh, with a, a full-blown mobile core on top of that, which was a partner of Hyperscaler, uh, and also uh, connecting uh, video cameras, which was coming from other partners, and also video analytics on top of that, which is another partner uh, of the Hyperscaler. And that all these kind of components together uh, solve the, the customer problem from uh, for for the for the harbor, so so it will be a combination there as well on on different engagement with hyperscalers, and we also clearly recognize that you know port and hyperscalers have a broad ecosystem, uh, and they have been you know playing in this area for for a number of years. So so it's not really a surprise that they are um, uh, they have this broad ecosystem, and they are also of course uh, quite, have a quite a broader appeal to uh, to developers in that sense. But again, uh, I think they're also happy to reach out to, to telcos in many markets to, to collaborate as we are part of this, the, the last leg, you know, to the, to the customers in many cases. And we also are taking care of these uh, national regulations uh, and, and, and can tick off those in a number of cases. So I think there you will see all these combinations of, of collaboration with telcos and uh, across ag aggregators and hyperscalers. So, so uh, and, and it's, uh, you know, we're trying to be a win-win, of course. Uh, and then, of course, we, it's, uh, it's, as I see it, a dynamic landscape. And so let's see how this uh, plays out at the end. Of course, it might be different in different regions of the world. Uh, but so far, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, making the pie bigger uh, and, and we can all take, uh, you know, enjoy the bigger bigger pie in that sense. Thanks, Terry. Well, that's what we want. Um, because obviously, yeah, as you say, the hyperscalers do have... Well, their global reach is very attractive to developers and hence their extensive ecosystem. Uh, Francis, multiple ways to engage with um, aggregators and hyperscalers. What are your thoughts? I think the most important thing is not to see um, uh, uh, hyperscalers and aggregators as either comp total, total impossible competition um, or uh, that they are part of the ecosystem which any of any telco platform has to has has to engage with. Um, I think it's also important to say with both the hyperscalers and the um, uh, and the aggregators, they got to where they were by solving a problem, a real developer problem. And if if we can again 
just make sure that we're, we're, we as telco are focused at exactly the same thing. If we are solving a developer problem, if we're solving it with an aggregator or in competition to an aggregator or in, uh, in collaboration with a hyperscaler or in competition with a hyperscaler, if, we, if we're clear what the commercial model and why a developer wants to use us, we can succeed. Um, I think the other, the other important thing is uh, uh, last week I was actually at a CNCF conference in Paris uh, called KubeCon. Which is all about um, it's a it's a it's a it's a huge developer um, community doing stuff with open open source particularly. Whilst hyperscale was important in the conversation, um, aggregators were part of this conversation. Uh, for example, Twilio, Tw- Twilio was there. Um, it, it's also important to say it was lots of small s- small um, operations doing clever things, collaborating, creating new ecosystems, creating new and, and new opportunities in there. And I think again, if Telco can can visit, see these these types of events, and see that see the the possibility in in this di- different form, that then possibly they'll see hyperscale and aggregators as less of a um, impossible mountain to uh, compete against. Thanks very much, Francis. And I think one of my takeaways from day one of this this summit is what's the problem we're looking to solve for developers and keeping that front and centre. Uh, right, next question. Um, here it goes. When we look at the big internet platforms, they are controlled by single companies. We appear to be talking more about a federated approach with numerous interconnected network platforms. And given that the big tech companies still haven't worked out how to do this successfully, what chance does Telco have? Um, Francis, perhaps I can come back to you w- w- with this one. Any, any thoughts from, from you as to, is, are we talking about a federated approach and uh, uh, what, what, what's our chances of success? I'll come back to what you just said, Guy, which is what is the problem we're trying to solve? Um, there may be a problem that needs a federated approach. There may be one that doesn't need a federated approach. But start if we, if we can start with what is the problem we're going to solve, we're in a much better um, place to sort of um, start a uh, start start that that that, that di- dialogue. Um, and I mentioned pay as you go earlier. Um, an- another good example of it's not about waiting for the whole whole of telco to be aligned and, and delivering the same thing. If you look at mobile money, and or at Safaricom was not waiting there for mobile money um, standards to be defined. It went out and effectively captured the Kenyan market in the process of, of delivering the m the solution. So we need to be thinking about that type of that type of opportunity. Federation may come in the future. The telcos Leading telcos there may, in fact, insert themselves as aggregators or federation um, suppliers in, in this thing. All sorts of business models are all, um, out, out there to be pursued. But what is the problem we're going to solve? Focus on it, deliver it, and then see how it scales maybe globally before we start thinking about everything has to work together on a, on a, glo- on a global scale here. I think, you know, uh, coming back to, I think, the second question, which is, can the smaller players uh, um, deliver here? It, it's all about focus. Smaller players can deliver. It, they, can may, they may not deliver to a global community, but if they can deliver capability to developers in a country, in an area, um, and that, that, that development capability is, is widely used, they can have success. Great. Thanks very much, Francis. Um, and let's go across to Mark as well. Mark, what are your thoughts? I think uh, it does come back to the problem. What are we trying to solve? If we talk about, if we look at it from a, for example, from a connectivity point of view, if we took that as the use case, then um, then telco inherently regulatory is a, is a national or a regional uh, play because of regulation, because of those things. So, so in order to create global scale, global a global platform, then yes, we probably are talking about a federated approach um, or, of of telcos operating uh, or working together in a framework, maybe MEF LSO, maybe in the Open API for, uh, approach. You know those sorts of things to create um, uh, collaboration. To offer global global scale global global opportunity um, again to solve that end end user or that end customer problem, I think if we look at the as the question worded it the the, the you know the big internet platforms, well, 
Yeah, what are they? They're essentially they 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 are successful marketplaces that that um, that gain traction because they enabled, to a greater or lesser extent, developers to develop different uh, different platform, different approaches, different um, service offerings uh, over the top. Now. Um, if if we in the telco environment can can emulate some of that, then we'll then we'll see a, a multitude of of different sort of platforms coming up. I, obviously, you kind of gravitate towards those big um, internet type platforms, but you know they're not always under the same same umbrella. If you look at those, they're, they're, they're actually a, they are actually a federation of lots of different services that are just offered through one window. Um, for example, think of the airline industry. For example, um, they can either be it can either be a a, a grouped um, alliance, as it were. You know, like the the, the major uh, major airlines have grouped themselves to be able to offer end to end capability. You know, flights and things across code share partners and all that sort of stuff. Or you've got the kind of the travel agent sort of approach that is a kind of a, an open marketplace with all of those players coming on on, on board. So the it may well appear that there is only one big platform, but actually, actually, there isn't. There's there's lots, and so therefore, I think the opportunity is there, and the the success really is about how how well we meet the needs of the 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 customer, be that a developer customer or the end user, uh, the end customer that's using these these development tool or these these services and things that are either developed externally or developed are also then in-house as well and uh, and enabled through uh, through uh, a, a global approach for example where that's needed so i think there's i, I don't think we have to worry uh, worry or fear um that we can't do um a federated approach i think we can if we needed to actually we're used to that within the telco space we've been doing that for years in order to provide uh, connectivity across the globe. That's what we do. Um, here, we're just talking about making that a little mm, uh, that journey a little bit more seamless, a little bit more um, engaging, um, and a little bit more uh, dynamic and responsive to uh, to the customer problem, the customer needs, which is coming out pretty stronger, I think, in this in this uh, Q and A session today. Indeed, it is. Yeah, thanks very much, Mark, for those comments. And uh, Terry, let's go across to you for um, your comments on this question about a, a federated approach. Yeah, no, no I, I broadly agree with uh, Mark and, and Francis. So, so I think it's important, you know, to be to have a sharp focus on the uh, on the business value, what you're creating value for the customers and and for yourself, and then of course also other partners who are. Uh, were part of the overall delivery, uh, but I think it's also back to the to maybe where the, the question is coming from is that uh, the nature uh, of a network and connectivity business, as I see it, is a bit different than the, of course the nature of the hyperscalers. So, so networks tend to be uh, local with local coverage and capacity. They are using regulated spectrum bands. Uh, you know, we are complying with all the national laws uh, on critical infrastructure and privacy, for example, and so forth. So, so, so the, the business logic around around building a network is a bit different than, than some of these uh, hyperscalers and where they are coming from. Then I think it's actually what, what Mark is uh, saying is also very fundamental and very important that, uh, of course, telcos have been used to collaborate. Uh, just look at, uh, you know, the specifications on, on, uh, on the 5G and 4G, fiber to the home and so forth. So, so this has been a, an outcome of, you know, a huge collaboration uh, across uh, within the industry. Uh, and of course, it's also, you know, the simple fact that we have roaming across a number of countries uh, is also we can put into the federation if you want or the collaboration. So, so there is collaboration. Of course, we can argue about the speed uh, and the agility uh, for the telcos in order to solve new customer problems. Uh, uh, so, so we cannot, you know, have a 10 years or decade long, you know, specification phase to do that. It needs to be much more rapid uh, in, in, in that sense. Uh, then I think it's also that we, we have demonstrated the potential value of uh, network and connectivity uh, in, uh, in, uh, through these APIs and, and also through the, to the platforms, uh, both in commercial setting and also through a number of showcases, for example, in with GSMA and also TM Forum. So, so, so there is you know, proof points, I think, on that collaboration is, is, uh, can be done. But I think it's also very fundamental and important what, what Mark and Francis are saying. You, know, you don't have to solve you know, the complete uh, picture uh, before you start. You can start much, much smaller. 
uh, on, a, on a focused, you know, uh, customer case, and then, you know, pull in the partners that you need in order to deliver on that. And of course, future will tell, you know, on, on the, how this comes out at the end. Uh, but for sure, if you don't, you know, engage, uh, you will not be part of the winning team. No, quite right. Thanks, Terry. Um, we've got to engage, uh, this, whatever happens uh, in, in the longer term. Right. Thanks very much. Let's um, try and squeeze in a couple more questions. I think we can do two more questions before we run out of time. So let's look at our next one. Um, how will the platform integrate with existing telco infrastructure and legacy systems? Um, Terry, perhaps I could come back to you for this one about integration with existing infrastructure and legacy systems. Yeah, I, I will try to be quick, I think, uh, as we are probably running out of time. But, uh, uh, of course, legacy systems has a bit of a negative, you know, uh, uh, melody or tone to it. So, uh, so, so if, of course, if it's going to be leg a legacy in the, term, uh, in the terms that it's a problem, uh, you can uh, we look upon and we are introduced platforms as a one way to isolate uh, or, or even expose, you know, that legacy uh, to, to partners. For example, if the legacy system is not able to support multi-tenancy, for example, or, or security isolation, there might be an opportunity to build something on top called a platform, for example, to interface a customer still towards the, the, the legacy system. So it's a way to potentially to isolate, you know, the legacy from, from the, the demands, uh, from, from uh, external demand, typically. You can also look upon, uh, and that's something we're also doing, we are looking upon a platform purely for internal use uh, to, to make this legacy uh, and to, to isolate and, and to have different life cycles on the le legacy systems. So allow us to, you know, uh, to decouple them and, and to st start phasing out some of them uh, and also freeze uh, others of the system. So, so it's a way to, to bring the business flexibility in the, in, call it into the system architecture. Uh, and, and platform might be, you know, one of the components in order to achieve that. Yeah, it could be. Uh, interesting. Thanks, Terry. Uh, Mark, um, would you like to add some thoughts to this question of uh, integrating with current infrastructure? Yeah, uh, it goes back to a little bit to the point I was making earlier uh, in one of, on one of the other questions about kind of meeting meeting uh, partners or meeting systems at where they're ready to. Um, Terry has made a great point about about abstraction, putting in you know kind of a, a, a platform. They, some sort of orchestration or automation or or abstraction layer into 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 uh, into that pla uh, into that uh, technology or legacy service to be able to then expose actually the key parts that are necessary for uh, for service delivery or for for the you know to resolve the problem um, and I think that's a very good way of being able to to manage that we've uh, we've had some very uh, in-depth discussions and uh, uh, and moving forward with with a, a, a number of, of, of niche players actually that help solve an, uh, a, a a distinct uh, problem or a distinct use case that actually then allows um, you know a, a legacy system to be able to be um, still get full full use out of that but in an in an automated platform as a network as a service sort of environment you can still leverage some of those those skills so i think it's really important to be able to meet the or or design your systems design your platform in such a way that you can meet um you can meet partners you can meet technologies uh, or or other systems at where they are ready to so it lowers the barrier to entry um for consuming a, a, a service or consuming through the platform that you've that you've orchestrated or designed and i think that's really really important because ultimately that's going to build to the success if it's incredibly difficult to onboard into your platform then you know the success is going to be limited Great. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mark. And Francis, over to you for, for thoughts on this question of, of integration with existing infrastructure. I'll come back to uh, the visit to KubeCon actually last um, uh, last week. I think I the think first thing is actually to, to make use of a lot of the um, developed communities, the, the development approaches of cloud native here. Um, there were a number of um, uh, companies that I met last week which were talking about API gateways, how uh, how you take legacy code and you, uh, you you expose it as APIs, even if that's not to the external world, just just 
just APIs, a, APIs in, and platformizing your existing legacy such that it can be exposed and easily integrated in this more modern approach, not the sort of classic large-scale system integration transformation that I think Telco has traditionally, uh, traditionally favored. Um, again, taking existing code, using things, for example, uh, taking Java and being able to deploy it on Kubernetes to allow the scale um, uh, in in terms of the opportunity and and uh, uh, that, that comes from that one, um, the the third thing I would say is 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 the whole of our community really needs to sort of take on board. I think it was the very famous Jeff Bezos uh, Amazon um, email, in which he said basically, if you don't expose anything as an API, you'll get fired. Um, we need to have that sort of uh, that sort of idea. Even if we are not going to make something external, think about what we are doing as an API that somebody else can consume. We can we can we can do a lot. Of, uh, we we can we can generate um, from our legacy there. And the final thing I would say is, and and, and this is very specific to Camara, is is the API is one thing, but the actual infrastructure to support that API is equally important. One of the challenges, actually, with say, for example, some of the network slicing APIs, is not that we can't provide the service orchestration or that we can't provide um, the the network slice. It's that we don't have the capacity, particularly at the RAN network, to be able to deploy on demand uh, on demand services. So we need to be looking at a lot more of the wider um, infrastructure that allows us to to deploy these APIs and actually have consumers use them. Um, and not be li- not be limited in the way that they can be can, they, they can be used. Great, thanks very much, Francis. Thanks everyone. Um, looking at the clock, we are almost out of time, but I do want to get in this final question. So uh, let's see what we can do. With this final question, uh, and it says, in what ways does a platform strategy change the product that the CSPs are selling to its customers? And how does it open up new wholesale and channel opportunities for them? All about the service. Um, Mark, are we able to start with you on this one? Your thoughts about uh, how it may change the the, the product and and the new opportunities it opens up? I think first and foremost, it can turn a static product into something that is dynamic and extensible. That's uh, that's what we we have noted, what we have devised with our products and services is that you can start to do much more, um, you can be much more flexible with how that product is consumed, be it commercial models, be it technical pieces. We, we found that actually architecting our network and our service offering and our automation platform um, allows us to be able to do things with the, with the technology that has been there for a long time, but really just couldn't be accessed. Um, when I think, if I think, for example, on our, on cross continental um, uh, transport links, for example, uh, data transport links, um, the the ability to to select and 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 really um, identify routing, um, which becomes really important on on very long distance uh, network routes, for example for resiliency, for geopolitical reasons, all those sort of things that that become steerable. I mean, the, it's been there in the technology for a long time. You've just been really difficult to access it at a, at, a, at a service level that can be exposed. You know, those are the sort of things that, uh, that, that can happen. There's many more that we could go to, but I'll, I'll give others the time to, to, to jump in there. But, um, yeah, I think it does open up uh, windows to be more more flexible and extensible with with the products and services great thanks very much mark uh well let's hear from francis and terrier to round out the program francis we'll come to you first uh does the platform approach change the product that csps are offering actually there's a very simple answer yes um but i come back to uh it it only changes it if we're very clear what it what is it we're trying to do who wants to buy it and what is the opportunity from that one? If we start from that that basis, and we we start to expand that out across a number of use cases, that gives us a huge opportunity for new products, new ways of earning earning revenue as a service, on demand services, etc. That platform enables you to do that. But start with start with the commercial model, 
and the commercial focus, who you're going to work with, who your customers are, and uh, the, the rest follows. Great. Thanks so much, Francis. And uh, Terry, let's uh, come to you for our final word. Yeah, so my also my answer is also yes. I think uh, one thing it does is actually lowering the threshold for uh, offering uh, more products. So so uh, so so that's uh, one of the things. So actually, uh, and if you want to read about this, you can probably look into our technology strategy. So there are two aspects there which I would just will highlight very briefly. I think uh, one is that we are actually uh, what we call delayering, which is collapsing an integrated stack. So so it's. Uh, uh, I have the opportunity to offer a lot no, uh, more new product types. Uh, that means also new pro- uh, customer types. Uh, and we also want to uh, deliver this as a service, which is another uh, way to, uh, you know, to, to to provide and also consume the services. So these are, you know, uh, characteristics we would we'd like to achieve with, uh, with following this approach. Great. Thanks, Terry. Well, we are out of time now. Um, the hour is up. Thank you so much to all of our guests who joined us today. And do remember to send in your questions for tomorrow's live Q&A show as soon as you can. Don't leave it too late. And please take part in the poll. There is still time for you to have your say. Here's the agenda for tomorrow, day two of the summit. We have a panel discussion for you on how APIs and middleware can support vertical applications. Plus, I interview GSMA CTO Alex Sinclair about the Open Gateway Initiative. Until then, thank you for watching and goodbye.